So we've talked about the first three steps in the requirements engineering process, and now we're gonna talk about the fourth and final step, validation. Now, what is validation? Validation is pretty much we're just validating, we're making sure our requirements are as thorough, as complete as they can be. Now, how is that done? Well, uh, I'm going to sh show you a little diagram here that kind of represents the, I suppose, the validation part of the requirements engineering process. So we're going to have, I might have driven those a little too small, but I'll, I'll make it work. So we begin on this side with our inputs. So these are the inputs of the validation process and this is the outputs of our validation process. So let's go ahead and call this our requirements and I'll just abbreviate that as so, as such. And then I'll do requirements validation, which we'll just say valid. Uh, or we can just do validate. So our inputs, we're gonna have our requirements documentation, again gonna abbreviate that. So our requirements documentation we did in the specification phase of the requirements engineering process. Then we're going to have our organizational standards. So these are just going to be the standards in which the organization has for like documentation, etc., and as well as all their uh, functionality standards and organization knowledge. So all the knowledge the organization or the client has. So what we're doing, we're taking all those inputs, and we're putting them in our requirement validation process, and then they're gonna produce two outputs. And these two outputs are firstly a list of problems. So these would be the requirements that I suppose need to be solved. And then we're gonna have the agreed actions. And these will be the agreed solutions to solve these problems. So these agreed actions will then come to solve those list of problems. And it's very important to have uh, your requirements documentation complete at this point, because otherwise you're gonna be solving for the wrong list of problems. And like I've mentioned several times before, and I'll probably sound like a broken record, but because it's so important, if you don't catch that requirement error before the coding step, if you catch in the delivery process, it's going to be a hundred times more expensive uh, and for the end system as if you just caught it in this validation process, perhaps. So who is going to be part of this validation process? Uh, first, you should assemble a validation team. And pretty much this validation team, i um, not really gonna draw it out. I might draw just a few people to show that it needs to be a team. Uh, so this is our validation team and we need people of varying backgrounds. So this person might be an actual developer. This might be someone from the client side. This might be uh, this might be, let's say this is a medical system that we're working on. This could be a doctor that obviously knows a lot about medicine, etc. And we can also have a lawyer on the validation team. Um, a lot of these things just for, just to have these different backgrounds and different skills. And this is because it's gonna increase the overall domain of knowledge. And that's exactly what we want when we validate our requirements to make sure, hey, is this programmable? hey, is this uh, useful for medicine? Will doctors use this? And hey, is the stuff that we're doing, is it done before? Do we need to go through legal, through uh, copyrights and all that? So I'll just do developer, um, M for doctor, and then for this would we'll do lawyer. So having this range of people on our validation team really answers these questions. And some of these questions will then uh, further answer what we need to answer in our validation and which is uh, pretty much we're going to do another checklist so we're going to have a validation checklist similar to the way we had the analysis except this is kind of our final check to see 
if we have valid requirements and valid um, actions to meet those requirements. So our validation team is going to work on this requirement validation, spit our list of problems and spit out our agreed uh, actions. And these list of problems have to abide by this checklist. And the first one is understandability. So pretty much, hey, can a reader of this uh, list of problems and agreed actions, if they were to read this document, could they understand what you were trying to say is pretty much all it is. Uh, then we have redundancy. Uh, you want to make sure that you know a problem isn't repeated twice. You know, obviously, otherwise you'll be solving the same problem twice. More code, more time, more money. The next completeness. Um, sorry about that. Completeness. Um, just repeat that. Complete. Uh, are your requirements complete? Did you forget anything in this requirements documentation, organizational standards, organizational knowledge? Um, if you're using these three inputs effectively, essentially you'll have all of your problems. So this should not be a problem. And then of course we have ambiguity, which is very relatable to understandability. Um, if someone reads this list of problems or the agreed actions, they're not going to be able to take that two different ways. And if they do, that means it's um, ambiguous and we do not want that for our list of problems and agreed actions like I've mentioned several times throughout the requirements engineering process. And then pretty much once you have this requirements validated, you go through the requirement validation process, you can begin designing the overall system. And that's essentially what we'll get into in a later lecture. But for now, we can go back and visit our requirements engineering process. So we talked about the elicitation, which was gathering our information. So gathering raw info was elicitation. Then analysis was taking that info in almost putting it into our requirements. So taking that info and kind of tweaking it and making sure we have our requirements met. Um, not that we have requirements, but we have our preliminary requirements. And then our specification, we're going to take those requirements and we're going to make it into a document. So we're specifying those requirements in a formal documentation. And then the validation process for taking that document plus um, other inputs such as the organizational knowledge and standards and we're turning that into our final requirements plus our actions. So not only are we saying what the problem is but we're also listing those agreed actions. So we're going to check off our validation section of the requirements uh, engineering process so now that we have all four of these done, we have finished the requirements portion of the software development lifecycle of software engineering. And now we're going to move on to system design, which is going to be a lot of system architectures, a lot of different diagrams, and we'll explain all that in future lectures.